Hey everybody, it's Mike Grohl with Fix My Hog. In this video today, we're going to be installing the SNS Gear Drive Cam Kit. Now, this kit is nothing new. Uh, back in 1999, when Harley came out with the Twin Cam, uh, pretty good engine, and right away SNS kind of looked at it and looked at this uh, tensioner arrangement and said, you know what, that's got to go. And so they, they built this Gear Drive Cam Kit, and we've been putting them in ever since 1999. Now. What we're seeing is a kind of a resurge of uh, all these people are going out and they're looking around at uh, older Harleys and uh, they're going, wow, I can afford a Harley now. So they're buying a 99 to 06 twin cam and what they're not realizing is, you know, you got these tensioners here. You got uh, the one on the inside and one on the outside. And uh, what Harley's recommending is an inspection at 30,000. And uh, a lot of people are oblivious to this and they buy the motorcycle and they give me a call and I, you know, first question on my mouth is, have you had the tensioners inspected? And they're like, what tensioners? Well, then it opens up this whole conversation on, you got to pull the cam cover, you got to take a peek at it and see what they look like. And uh, then it kind of leads into, you know, the best option to make it bulletproof and never go back in is gear drive. Um, we see a lot of problems with the hard facing come off the factory cam the inner cam bearing, you know, there's just a lot of upgrades we do when we do this kit. We're going to go over this today in this video and it's going to be, you know, a lot more detailed from what I've seen on the internet. So, um, if you're new to the Harley game, this is the first thing you're going to want to look at on your twin cam. So we're going to take a little bit of time here and kind of go over the components we're going to be putting in your engine today. Okay, so you went out and you bought yourself an older twin cam from 1999 to 2006. They have the uh, spring-loaded tensioners. In 06, the Dynas actually were kind of the guinea pig that year, and they went to a hydraulic-type tensioner. And, you know, at uh, Fix My Hog, we already did a, a video on uh, the s uh, hydraulic cam kit. You know, that's an option. Typically, you know, we're doing that when the crank runout is too much and then that's a really good option. But uh, for all longevity, bulletproof purposes, the, uh, the gear drive is really the way to go and that's what we're gonna concentrate on today. Now, if you look at the cam chain tensioners, people get their motorcycle home, they pull the exhaust, they pull the cam cover, and they wanna take a peek in there because you can get, get a pretty good shot at it, what they look like. And uh, I'll show you a couple here. Now you can see this one's severely worn out. It's on the verge of, you know, major catastrophic damage to the motor. It's going to run all this debris through the oil pump, through the cam plate, through the lower rods. And uh, I have seen them fail even before 30,000. I've seen guys ride it up to 60,000 without a problem. So it's just something you're really going to want to keep an eye on. Here's a shoe, you know, what they should look like. Uh, there's some aftermarket companies that uh, make a rebuild kit for the OEM tensioner. You know, if you want to save money, you put it back to stock. But, uh, you know, the problem with just doing an inspection, <clears throat> say you, you, you pull the cam cover, everything looks wonderful. Well, here's what you don't see. And uh, it's a problem with the, you know, the hardness of the factory cam. If you look at this real close, you can see the hard face is coming off. And eventually what that's going to do is going to create a couple of problems, big ones. Now. This one's even more catastrophic because uh, where the hard face came off is actually where the inner cam bearing rides. And then you're talking, you're going to wipe out the crankcase half. It gets very expensive to replace that or have it, send it out and have it fixed. So, you know, if you think you're off the hook when you pull the cam cover and the shoes look good, you, you really, if you're going to keep this motorcycle and you want to take the time, pull the cams out, do a thorough inspection, Replace the factory lifters, replace the inner cam bearing. There again, let's go over that right now while we're talking about it. Here's the factory cam bearing. It's kind of a cage bearing, and what we see is these can deteriorate around 50,000 miles. Now, what SNS does, they sell you this Torrington bearing. There's no cage in it, and the longevity is, like I said, we've been We've been putting these gear drives in for the last 16, 17 years. I got customers with over 100,000 miles on their bike. Never a problem with the inner cam bearing. Never a problem with the hard face coming off the cam. You know, that's a, that's a huge plus right there because 
like I said, people think they're off the hook, but boy, these cams are soft. You know, they, the hard face wears out. So that and it's, it's a very anemic cam. You know, it's EPA compliant and we really just don't put a stock cam back in. Uh, most of the bikes we're looking for torque and with it comes horsepower. So it's, it's really good upgrade. So what we'll end up doing you know, the number one thing you do when you get the cams out is you uh, check the run out on the crank. Because, you know, they're saying three thou, some people push it on that as far as the run out. If it is excessive, like any 2007 later, when, it, when they went to the hydraulic cam chain uh, setup, the crank run out got extremely bad. You know, they opened up the tolerance on that. So we really have a hard time putting gear drive in the 07 and later unless the crankshaft is uh, you know, updated to the SNS flywheels, or you take the factory crank, send it out, have it true and pro-plugged, and then you can get away with it. But uh, we're gonna cover that a little later on the video when we get the cams out of this motorcycle. So um, there again, <clears throat> let's go over the lifters while we're at it, because that's another big thing. You know, in, this, uh, in the brochure here for the cams, they're saying you can, uh, um, keep the lifters in the bike and do the, the cam swap, which is true, but here's the deal. The factory lifter from about 2010 and later, the quality of the lifters has just kind of gone downhill. And if you read in the factory manuals now, what they say is uh, frosting is normal. Now, if you look at this lifter, you can probably zoom in on that. You can see the transition of where the hard facing is coming off the thing. And that's a lifter with less than 20,000 miles. Now, frosting to me is saying that the hard facing is deteriorating. So anytime you're in there, buy yourself some quality SNS lifters. You don't want to have this problem. I mean, it's basically free labor for another 150 or 60 bucks. Buy four new lifters, put them in. I got another example here of a Harley lifter that what you can do is you kind of clean all the oil out of it and then you can see that the hard face there is coming off of it and put a magnet on it. You can see that the, the bearings are deteriorated and that's gonna get run all through your motor. You wanna avoid having to split the cases and replace the flywheels, you know? So you wanna catch all this stuff before it really deteriorates. Here's another example of a Harley lifter that's completely deteriorated. So that's not a corner you wanna cut. I mean, we're gonna pull the lifters out of this bike today and replace all four. Uh, it says in the brochure, you don't have to, I mean, if, <clears throat> but we're gonna cover that base because uh, we don't wanna have problems. So uh, as far as that goes, we're gonna be uh, putting adjustable push rods in this motorcycle. You don't have to do that. In fact, first thing you're gonna wanna do before you do cut the push rods, if you are putting them in, so you gotta take and do an inspection on the lower rocker box gaskets and the upper rocker box gaskets. Because if there's any leaks, then you gotta have the rocker boxes off anyway. You might as well, you know, just reuse the factory push rod unless you're putting in a, a more than a drop-in cam. The cams we're gonna be putting in today are 510 lift. That'll work fine with stock push rods. It'll work fine with stock lifters. It's, you know, a drop-in cam, it's relatively safe and uh, most of my customers, that's what they want. You know, they want pump gas, electric start, they want to ride this thing forever. And that's the nice thing about this cam. You know, it's gonna give you good torque, good power, and good reliability. So let's move on. Okay, uh, let's go over the parts included in the kit from SNS here now. What you're gonna get is you're gonna get uh, the full bearing kit, which is really nice because uh, it's got the uh, the two Torrington bearings, you know, that we talked about, the inner cam bearings, which if you're in there, you gotta put them in, you know, it's kind of a big deal and we're gonna go over that tool here in a bit that they use there. So inner cam bearings, uh, you actually take and uh, you get rid of the side load bearing in the cam plate here, which for the chain drive, in fact, in 99 and early 2000s, they, uh, they had two ball bearings in here and they realized right away that uh, the ball bearing on this cam, on the, the rear cam, couldn't handle the, the load, and so they started failing. So Harley actually had a, a bulletin and a warranty thing. Five years and 50,000 miles, they would uh, warranty it. 
and uh, then they went to this side load bearing uh, right into 2000. So we actually go back to a ball bearing here because with the gear drive, it doesn't have that load being exerted on it, you know, from the chains. So we're going to go over that. Um, so it comes with two ball bearings for the cam plate. And then, of course, you got gear drive cams. The nice thing about this is when you buy the kit from s and is these gears are already pressed onto the cam. So you don't got to mess around with that because that's kind of a big deal, putting them on correctly. That's done. Your outer gear set, um, like I said, it's a pretty nice setup. Put it on, forget about it. Just to let you know, okay, so you check the runout on your crank, and we're going to show a procedure on checking the backlash. You know, nobody checks this, but we're going we're gonna to cover that base today because it's kind of a big deal. What they offer is uh, a couple different gear sizes, uh, plus and minus, so you can actually uh, fine-tune that if you really want to chase that. And, and the only time you're really probably going to do that is if it was tight, you know, and we're going to... We're going to be measuring that here later on the video. Uh, another thing they do that's kind of nice is uh, this little cam plate here. It's a support plate. It's a lot thicker than the factory one. You can see, I got a stock one here. Just take a look at the difference there. I mean, it's a lot beefier. I mean, if you were putting some wicked cams in here, you, you want to increase some more support to the plate. But even with this drop-in cam, it's a nice little upgrade. So that's something that comes in the kit. We'll be putting that in. And uh, it's got a new circ clip here, of course, for the cams. Some new hardware, O-rings, and of course, cam cover gasket. So pretty complete. Um, we're going to be obviously uh, replacing the lifters, like I said earlier. So that's something else you're going to want to order up, have them ready to go good quality lifter and in this video we're actually going to put in the SNS quickie push rods and what I like about these push rods is you don't have to remove the lifter blocks if you don't want to I mean for, as far as installing them a lot of uh, vendors it becomes more labor intensive and these are actually really easy to put in and it's something we wanted to cover on the video because uh, there isn't much out there on these so we'll be going over that um, and then showing, uh, there is actually a procedure we're going to show the uh, gear lash on the inner cam bearing if you really wanted to chase it. So let's go over some of the tools we got here because uh, like anything, uh, this is a pretty big job and you're going to need some special tools. Uh, the, probably the most important one is going to be the inner cam bearing. And it's... Uh, this is the part you can't shortcut. I mean, you know, you, you got to put you got to put the inner cam bearings in it. And if you don't want to rush out and buy this tool because it's expensive, it's got the uh, remover for like a blind hole, and then it's got the installer and this plate. You're probably only going to use it once, you know, unless you get a group of guys together. Maybe you all pitch in. But if you don't have that, here's what I would do. I would probably strip the motorcycle down get the cams out of it and call up a local independent shop or the Harley dealer and say, look, here's where I'm at. I've got two Torrington cam bearings. I'm going to trailer my bike up, leave it with you a day or two, charge me whatever. I mean, I would think the bill is not going to be over an hour. That's cheaper than the tool. Uh, they're running the risk of putting the bearing in. You know, if you're not comfortable with it, you'd be probably better off just having them do it. But if you got the money and you want to do it, buy the tool. You know, there's probably cheaper ones out there, but we use that thing quite a bit. Another thing they got here is a uh, little support plate tool. And how this works is you can put the cam plate on here. Just so you can uh, press the cams and bearings in and out of it. It's got another little thing for you know, pushing the bearings in. It's kind of nice. I've seen guys on uh, the internet, they're, uh, they're putting holes in tables or they're building them out of wood, block wood. You could probably take your time and do that. There again, like I said, you're, you're not going to be doing this every week. So if you had to build a tool, take your time and do it. You know, if you've got buddies that are, are doing the same thing, everybody get together, put their money together. 
This, you really wouldn't need to buy this, but it's part of that kit for pressing the cams in. You can kind of improvise on stuff like that. Not a big deal. Uh, this tool here is to, uh, you know, unload the uh, tensioner. It just goes on there like this, and then you can unload it. If you're putting the gear drive cam kit in, it doesn't really matter if you damage these things. Just take a channel lock, bend them back, and put the pin in. We're going to kind of cover that, uh, how that comes out of there. There's a little retainment thing that goes in there to hold it back. But if you're putting gear drive in, this stuff's basically going in the trash anyway. So it's, it's not going to matter how you take it out. So, All right, we're going to get ready to uh, cut the push rods on this motorcycle. <laughs> 